I'm uh, Chris Hopton. I'm a drummer and session drummer. I play with a band called uh, Life of a Hero. Um, I'm 29 from Chooksbury and I've been playing drums for about 16, 17 years. <laughs> Thank you for coming today, Chris. At uh, what age did music and drumming first start becoming an interest to you? Um, Music-wise, um, around 12, sort of 13 years old. Um, my dad was a drummer, so around a lot of rock music and stuff like that uh, for a long time. Um, and then I first wanted to play guitar, as most people do, because it looks cooler. And then obviously dad playing drums, I thought, ah, oh, quite cool. And then by the time I got to 14, I was like, I want a drum kit got on the kit and then went on from there, really. <laughs> and uh, before, you know, your passion of music, was there anything else you did? Um, yeah, I was doing some, like, martial arts and stuff like that, mainly kickboxing. Um, I found that really interesting because I used to watch a lot of the old martial arts films and really big fan of, like, Jackie Chan and um, Jean-Claude Van Damme and all those sort of movies from quite a young age, really. But I really got involved in that and started doing a lot of that first. And did you have any icons growing up? Um, it, uh, well, I had a couple, really, because obviously it, it sort of switched from when I got more into music. So at first it was like, I, I one of my icons was Jean-Claude Van Damme because of his movies and um, the martial arts that he was doing in those films. He was a bit of an icon for me for a while. And then it, when I turned to music, it um, became my influence for drumming-wise. Um, it's one of my biggest icons as most drummers. It's um, John Bonham. Um, and like Lars Ulrich, and then I really got into a band called Avenged Sevenfold, and the drummer from that, uh, the Rev, as they call him, or Jimmy Sullivan, um, he was my biggest influence for quite a while. So, and then unfortunately he passed away, but you know he's one of those people that sort of really got me into the heavier drumming and really working on my craft a bit more. And what do you remember the most about your first time playing in front of an audience? Uh, <laughs> Um, absolutely bricking it, <laughs> as most people do. Um, yeah, really quite nervous. It was actually for my um, music GCSE um, part of that, cause you have to do like a live performance. And it was really in front of everyone's parents. Um, so that was quite... And then we sort of did like a little band project and we played a couple of covers, like a couple of Muse covers and stuff like that. Um, and that really was my first proper live performance and I was a bit really nervous when I, before, I, before I started. And then as soon as you get going, I relaxed and was like oh this is actually really really fun I really enjoyed it I enjoyed like the bit of the adrenaline rush you get from performing and stuff like that and what's your most memorable show that you've done oh um it's quite hard one there's a couple of like random ones for different reasons really um but um I don't know that's a hard question <laughs> uh, wow well, okay well, my me most memorable ones for not performance wise or like the audience size or anything is actually because um, the back of my drum stool fell off the back of the stage little stage I was playing on um, and I was still like sort of hanging on and trying to play at the same time <laughs> so I just about got through the end of the song and I, they just turned around and said like, why does it sound so weird and I was just there like step like this <laughs> my legs in the air like, um, that's probably the most one yeah <laughs> And um, is there a show that you remember that had um, difficulties performing that show? Um, no, I haven't really had one like that yet. Um, it's always been little random things like, you know, stands sort of half falling down and stuff like that. But it's, it happens quite a lot. Well, not all the time, but, you know, you get used to it and it's something you can get around and play. But I've never really had anything that's been, like, so difficult that it's been, like, you might have to pull the show. Um, realistically. Uh, so not really now. <laughs> <laughs> Which other artists uh, that you've worked with, uh, either in performances or, um, you know, behind the scenes, you know, working in the background, preparing shows and stuff, have you enjoyed working with? Um, I've been really enjoying working with my current band, uh, Life of a Hero, because the guys from that project um i didn't really know most of them properly before i joined the band um 
I'd heard a little bit about the guitarist and the bass player, the, the, well, the original guitarist and bass player um, from their previous band. Because they did quite well touring around um, a band called Midnight City. Might as well give them a little mention because they're still playing with those as well. Um, yeah, Miles and Josh, they're just really high-level players and they play with some really experienced people. So I've been really enjoying playing with those guys just to just have a bit more level up of professional playing. Um, and the singer from that band is is brilliant. I really really enjoy playing with him because he's a good laugh as well. And the guitarist, the other guitarist, um, Alex, is uh, just one of those guitarists you sort of watch, you first see him play and you think, bloody hell, he's, he's really got something going on. And he's only like a local guy from um, Cleve, my Bishop Cleve. I was a bit surprised because I heard about him a little bit. People were sort of saying, oh, yeah, he's you know, a good guitarist and stuff. And I thought, yeah, yeah, you know, how people say, oh, yeah, he's a good guitarist. And then I actually watched him, because I joined the band after we released the first album. I had a previous drummer that I'm good friends with, Pete Newdeck. Um, and I watched the video and listened to the song. And one of the solos on the first single just absolutely blew my mind. I was a bit like, oh, that's really cool. And I really luckily they, they were saying, oh, we're thinking about having a different drummer because the drummer didn't want to do it full time because he's got other projects and he's doing recording and um van driving and like tour driving for other people as well um and i luckily got sort of a bit of chance to go and audition and do that and i got it so luckily <laughs> <laughs> and is there anyone new you would like to work with in the future um yeah there's loads of people that's like <laughs> really high-end um more professional people would be really cool um you know um, probably people outside my reach, really, but <laughs> um, not anyone specific in my mind right now. But just because you never know what opportunity sort of comes your way. And is there any location or venue you would like to perform at in the future? Uh, this is probably one of the places that nearly everyone would want to play at. It's obviously, Wembley <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> um, that's like the the big big dream, I guess. Um, other than that, it's not. There's not really many places. Um, there's a place called the the Troubadour, I think it's called in London. Very small, like club. It was one of the first places um, Jimi Hendrix played in the UK when he came over, um, and like Led Zeppelin and stuff. I like, used to go there and jam after they did their big show. They'd go for a late night party there, and they'd still play again at this little place called the Troubadour. And that'd be a, a small place I'd want to play, but it's just awkward to get a gig there. I think cause it's middle of London. <laughs> hmm. And is there any other career you would like to pursue in the future? Um, I'm not sure to be honest. Um, I've always sort of thought mainly about playing music as a as a, a, a big career. Um, so you know, if I maybe got like lucky to do some random bits of acting or something, that'd be quite interesting to do. Um, just because I did a bit of drama at school, and I found it interesting for quite a while, but um, never really wanted to fully pursue it because I thought it was um, music just sort of took over a bit. I think. <laughs> Is there any other areas of the music industry that you would like to have an opportunity to work on? Um, I think getting some like management would be quite cool. Maybe a bit later on when I get to a certain point, I think like you know, um, touring and stuff's a bit bit much work for me because it's sort of at a lower level. If I don't you know get to a level where it's paying enough to do it full time all the time or something like that, um, then maybe some sort of management of some sort or um, record label work working for you know finding bands or working with the bands to keep their careers going and stuff like that. I think that'd be really interesting. And how do you feel your career has progressed over the years? Um, quite well. Um, it's been like sort of a medium level of mainly like sort of local stuff and small little tour around and doing some recording with it's quite good producers and stuff like that. Um, but the last, this last year, surprisingly, I think it's really slowly started to creep up a little bit with this new project because we're doing some really cool things with that. Got, we're working on another album. Um, we've got some good shows booked in for next year. Um, and I got a, should be doing a session gig next year for quite a well-known um, singer from like the late 80s, 90s. Um, just a little session gig abroad. So that'd be quite interesting to do. So it's a bit of like a, a steady little creep up this year. But since before then, it's been a bit of a steady sort of rock kept me going, playing more locally and um, a few gigs up and down the UK really. And what would you say are the advantages and disadvantages of working in the music industry? Uh, I'll go advantages first, because that's always nicer. Um, get to meet a lot of um, really cool people. Um, get to make friends from all over 
all over the place um, that share a similar passion to you and you can really get into some in-depth conversations about music and where it's recorded and things you like, things you don't like. Um, and you get, yeah, you get around a little bit more, which is the best parts, I think, of it. Um, disadvantages, not always well paid. <laughs> uh, can be hard to sort of get yourself to a point where you're getting paid you know, decent money for something you've really crafted at and worked at. Um, I'd say that's the main disadvantage, really. And then maybe spending less time with your other friends that aren't musically and your family and stuff because obviously you're tr- gigging around and travelling around and then most gigs end up landing on a, a date that everyone's like, oh, we're getting together to do this. You know, you think, well, sorry, I can't do that because I'm doing a gig wherever. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the main disadvantage, I think, really. And what advice would you have for anyone who's looking at becoming a drummer uh, forming a band or working in the min- uh, working in the music industry as a whole, what advice would you have for them? Uh, don't do it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, get the work as much work as you can in your um, instrument, whatever instrument it happens to be, especially drums, early as you can because you don't realise how much more time you've got to practice when you're at school and those earlier years than you do later on. Even though when you think, when you're at school, you think, oh, when I'm older, I'll have more time to do whatever I want and blah, blah. Just doesn't seem to work out. You seem to get a lot of your wood uh, wood chipping done early on, you know, wood shedding done really early. Um, that's the main bit of advice. And don't be afraid of a bit of music theory because I got into that a little later than I should have done. And it, I think I could have been a bit further along earlier if I did jump into that a lot earlier. Um, and then with like making a band or something like that, to start with your mates. You just don't know sometimes because some bands start with, you know, like you 2 they were all just friends at school and they were like, just put this band together, kept trying and trying and trying and practising and learning together and then they're bloody you 2 so. <laughs> so you just never know. Um, but, you know, the earlier you can get into a band, the better cause you can develop more as a musician. Even if you think, oh, I can only play so many beats and do so many drum fills or, you know, play so many riffs on guitar and stuff. It's just worth getting together with some mates and just jamming it out because it just makes you a better musician, really. Thank you very much for your time today, Chris. You're welcome. Cheers.